It's a Sunday afternoon. I'm 10 years old, home alone in my parents' house in Tel Aviv, sitting around wondering what to do. I could have joined my friends at the beach, but I wanted something else. I wanted something different. And so, bored with my books, bored with the TV, I all of a sudden hear, CQ, 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 this is Forex for 4 India Charlie calling from the other room. So I follow the sound into my dad's room, and I realize that it's coming from a little wooden table. And on that table, there's my dad's radio station. Now, I know that I really shouldn't mess around with my dad's station, but I do it anyways. Or at least I try to, because I didn't really know what I was doing. So I start to tinker. I start to dial the antenna and fine tune it. I start to connect different cables. And a couple of minor electric shocks later, boom, I establish a connection. And I could connect with all these anonymous voices from across the ocean. And now my journey had started. I was literally hooked. And I wanted to get my own radio amateur license. But to get your license, you need to pass an exam in Morse code and in engineering, and you got to understand something. This world doesn't really have many kids in it. In fact, it doesn't have any kids in it. Your average radio amateur person is a male engineer, um, which meant I wasn't exactly fitting that archetype. When I went to my first class, the reaction was, did you get lost? Are you looking for your brother? And when I said, no, I'm here to get my license, the room burst into laughter. And so my first reaction was just to run away. I mean, I was 10 years old. I felt extremely rejected by some of the people who I honestly thought would be my best friends. So, but then I remembered that when I was home alone with that radio amateur station connecting with all these distant voices from across the ocean. I felt as if I was part of something secret, something underground. My curiosity had led me to experience the freedom and excitement that I never felt before. And I wasn't going to give all that up just because of some grumpy old man. So I decided to keep on going, despite this unwelcoming environment, because there was no way I wasn't going to get my license. And so, what started is just another afternoon ended up with me completing my crash course in Morse code and in engineering, getting my license, and officially becoming a hacker. <laughs> so now, what does it take to be a hacker? It takes three things. Curiosity, tinkering, and grit. And in my personal story, curiosity, I followed the sound into my dad's room, and I found this new world that I wanted to be part of and I wanted to learn more of. Tinkering. I was playing around with the cables and the rest of the station until I established a connection. And grit, I wasn't going to give up. Despite the obstacle and setbacks along the way, I was going to get my license. We're all even here today because we want to hack something. We want to explore new horizons. We want to find more meaning in what we do. Think about big moments in history. Would they have ever happened without curiosity, tinkering, and grit? Without hackers? Think about the first plane by the Wright brothers. Think about the first submarines, initially called fool killers. Think about women hacking the vote. They hacked the system. And even Apple. They started as a bunch of hackers in the garage and became the establishment. Every single disruption and any major innovation in any category always started as a hack. They start at someone's basement. They learn as they go, they prototype, they make mistakes, they try again, they make mistakes. They have this grandiose vision that no one ever thought of before. These hackers were always considered as crazy and foolish, and we probably even had the same reaction to hackers even 200 years ago. But, you know, we're always going to have this individual geniuses, hackers, entrepreneurs that will always innovate and come up with new solutions despite of the resistance of the system. But is that going to be enough? The pace of change and the scope of global challenges that we are facing today means that we can no longer rely on these few individuals. We need much more than that. And we need to prepare the next generation to cope with this unpredictability. Because I don't need to tell you that the world is changing, right? We know that we're currently experiencing the worst youth unemployment crisis in history. 
According to the World Economic Forum, 40% of the world's unemployed are youth. And we know that the world of work is changing. Our parents used to have one job their entire lifetime. We will probably have five jobs in our lifetime. And the next generation will probably have five jobs at the same time. And we know that the old notion of university plus good grades equals a career is no longer valid, as we see an entire generation suffering from unemployment like never before. So we know that things are changing, so now what? How do we operate in this new economy? How do we help the next generation thrive and not just survive in this new complex and unpredictable world? And how do we prepare youth to move from school to employment and into jobs that haven't even been created yet? So what we need is a new world, a new model. Because a new world requires new ways, because the old ways simply don't work anymore. What we need is a new model with hacking at its core. We need to actively support the next generation to embrace and develop their hacker mindset. And the hacker mindset is the foundation for the new creative economy. It's the future of work. It's a must-have for tomorrow's leaders. And it's the language of solutions for the world's most pressing challenges. So how do we cultivate a hacker mindset? Well, we need to do a few things. We need to foster students' curiosity with real-world problems, moving beyond academic theory so that they can develop critical thinking for themselves. We need to encourage them to tinker and to investigate why things are the way they are and not just give them predefined problems with fixed solutions, and instead challenge them to come up with new problems, new, new challenges that maybe don't have a solution, and they'll need to hack it. And we need to create a space where they will feel safe to express their ideas and develop their confidence and ultimately encourage grit. And I've seen this over and over again in our workshops. When you give students the power to lead and to tinker. They trust themselves, they believe in themselves. And then they try new things without being afraid, and they grow. So why am I here? Because this personal hacker journey of this stubborn 10-year-old girl had led me to pursue my mission to help shape the next generation of global leaders and innovators. And I'm going back to where I began, and I'm reaching out to the world, and this time I'm reaching out to you, because I can't do this alone. We all play a role in creating the world of tomorrow. So how can you help the next generation succeed, whether you're there as a teacher, as an employer, as a mentor, or as a parent? Give them new ways to embrace their curiosity. Encourage them to tinker and experiment in whichever way you can. And when things don't go according to plan, champion grit and tenacity to not quit at the first obstacle and instead See these obstacles as gifts. This is how we grow leaders of tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you.